Welcome to the I Love Recruiting Podcast with your host, Adam Roach. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the I Love Recruiting Podcast. I am your host, Adam Roach, and today do I have someone special for you. We're going to talk about unleashing the power of leverage with my friend, Vanessa Rosenblum from Pro REA Staffing. Vanessa, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So gang, for all of those that are listening right now, you know me when it comes to leverage, that is my favorite, favorite word, because again, we can only do so much with our own two little hands and our own two little feet. So Vanessa, catch us up. Tell us about yourself and then let's, let's go into what um, uh, pro REA staffing is really is. Yeah, absolutely. So pro REA staffing is a company I started back in 2008, but I've actually been recruiting real estate assistants since 2004. So my whole career. (laughs) And I got started because I worked for a real estate business coach and we saw how powerful leverage was in their business. It really is true that a great assistant can help you double or even triple your business in two to three years. I've seen it over and over. But what I also saw is that our clients really struggled to hire the right person. They hired, they struggled to train them and they struggled to retain them. And I came to my boss and I said, you know, I think I can help agents hire. He's like, oh, that's cute. You can try that. <laughs> and here we are 18 years later. And it's, uh, it's a business that has grown and flourished. And, um, you know, we've helped thousands of people hire mm-hmm. at this point. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I just got off a coaching call with an actual agent that I was coaching. Uh, This is her second year in the business, and she's going to close almost 60 transactions. And her homework last time was, I said, tell me your dream goal for next year, your stretch goal, and your slam dunk goal. And the stretch goal was that she wanted to do 170, I'm sorry, the dream goal was 173 transactions or about half a million in GCI. And I said, who do you need to become to get there? And she goes, stronger, bigger, better, faster. I'm like, no, you need to call Vanessa. (laughs) So walk us back that. How does someone, in your experience, and I want our audience to hear this, because every year, right about this time, we do our business planning clinics, right? And what do they normally do? They want to double their business. That's what, at least from my experience, that's what they do. How does it... And from your experience, how does someone double or even triple their business when they bring on leverage? What does that mean? Right. I think one of the key things to to keep in mind, we're always thinking about what is my assistant going to do for me? What is their job description? And what you really need to think about first is what is my new job description? Mm. When I hire this person, what am I going to do differently from what I do now? And that means you're going to spend at least 80% of your time prospecting, negotiating, and closing deals. So if you don't have an assistant, I can guarantee you you're not spending 80% of your time doing dollar productive activities. Mm-hmm. So if you can, and you're, maybe you're spending, God knows, maybe 20% because you're buried in paperwork, who knows? But if you invest in the right person and that person puts the right systems in place, and this is a big piece, like let's be real, most agents aren't very good at creating or following systems. You know, right. they, they just want to like run and gun. But mm-hmm. when you have the right person next to you who actually implements those systems into your business, follows them consistently and frees you up to actually focus on prospecting, negotiating, and closing deals, it changes everything. You know, and it's not just in real estate. I hired my assistant, Liza, over six years ago, and I I talk about my business in terms of BL and AL, before Liza and after Mm. Liza, because it was like a biblical shift in how (laughs) things were done. I mean, I am no different than any real estate agent. Everything was in my head. Yeah, I kind of had a system. I sort of wrote stuff down, but you know, I knew how things rolled, so it was fine. Bringing her into my business, 
changed everything. We were able to hire more recruiters. You know, we were able to serve more clients and provide better service. And it's exactly the same for every single real estate agent when they get that right person in that role. It changes everything. Now, I want to go down the path there that you said system creation, right? Yeah. I've had agents in the past that's, that think, and again, you coach us up on this. Do they have to have the thought of the system? This is the agent now. Does the agent have to have the thought of the system before they hire the EA? Or can the EA come in and say, I'm going to systematize all of this for you? What would you, what would you suggest there? So this goes into you get what you pay for. So there are system builders and there are system maintainers. And, you know, depending on your budget, when you're first starting to hire, you might need to hire a consultant to work with your assistant who is a, cons who is a system maintainer to get things started. So it depends. But ideally, if you can afford to hire the higher level strategic thinking executive admin, no, they're going to come in and tell you exactly how things should be run. And your job is to kind of get on board. Um, obviously, their, their job is to create systems that are easy for you to follow. But they're the ones who, is go who are going to like look at what's happening and what isn't happening efficiently and create those systems. Mm -hmm. I love that. So what would you suggest someone that maybe is new to the thought process of bringing on leverage? Because here's where they all go. I can't afford Right. And we know you and I both know and and the experienced agents know you can't afford not to have one. Right. So when you said we've got a system builder, and we've got system maintainers and you might have to pay more for a system builder. What would you suggest or what would you coach someone up to in that space that says, Vanessa, I just I just can't afford. I just don't know. I just it just sounds so expensive. What would you say to them? you can take baby steps, right? Mm. You, most people who are listening probably use a transaction coordinator. That's your first step in leverage. You can hire a virtual assistant to handle marketing tasks for you. They can probably do a much better job than you can for much less than what your hourly rate is if you were to actually calculate your hourly rate. And by the way, I mean, if you really wanna think about what you can afford, you need to sit down and figure out what is your hourly rate. My guess is you're making I don't know, $50 an hour. It could be a hundred, 300 an hour. If you're doing $20 an hour work, but you should be paying yourself $50 an hour, guess what? You can afford an assistant. <laughs> right. Very true. Right. Uh -huh. and, and I don't know if I shared this with you in our past conversations, all those listeners, I want you to go to my YouTube page, Adam R. Roach, scroll back maybe four years ago, I had hair and I actually did a whiteboard session where I showed you the power of leverage. And that was, how do you increase, and I want you all to write this down. How do you increase your dollar productivity such that it's all dollars and no hours, right? So how do you increase your dollar productivity such that it's all dollars and no hours? And that YouTube uh, section that I did was actually coached to me by one of my former coaches. And it blew me away. And so you're absolutely right there. I love that. Paying attention to that hourly rate that you have right now. How much are you really paying yourself, right? Um, right. That's fantastic. I want to go to what we talked about in the beginning uh, off camera here. And we talked about JCG plus T. Tell us what that means. Yeah. So, you know, as a recruiter, we have lots of successes. And then of course we have failures and we hate to see a, a placement fail. And so over the years, we've really dissected why do placements not work out? We have somebody who was successful in their past job. They, you know, they went through our very detailed vetting process. Our client is well-meaning and is, you know, you know, is at a point where they are ready to hire this type of a person. You put two people together and sometimes it just doesn't work out. What the heck, how do we, how do we prevent that from happening as much as possible? Mm -hmm. I went through and I looked at all the reasons I was given for why something didn't work out. And if you, if you listen to the answers people give, it, those answers can fall into one or more of three categories. Either they weren't a job fit or a skill fit. So we, you know, we thought that their skills aligned with the job, but they didn't. 
um, or they weren't a culture fit. And what we mean by culture here is really about values. At some level, the values of that assistant didn't align with the values of that agent. And finally, goal fit. Um, you know, sometimes what somebody thinks their goals are in their career shift and they're no longer a fit for the position. Sometimes an agent's vision for their business shifts and it's not in alignment with their assistant. So JCG are the, we want to make sure somebody is in great alignment on job fit, culture fit, and goal fit in order for them to be a good fit. If any of those are out of alignment, we're going to have a problem. And then finally, the T stands for talent because they have to be talent and talent shows up differently in different roles. I can remember back in my early twenties, I was a sales clerk at a Macy's and I was terrible at that job. I don't know what it's like asking people if they wanted to open a credit card account. I mean, it was miserable. I was not talent. I did not show up as talent in that job. And I think we can all think of positions where we weren't in alignment with that position. Sure. So you know, we want to make sure as we move through the screening process that this person's natural innate talent is going to shine in the environment in which they'll be placed. So we took that concept and we created a hiring process, a methodology that we take our clients through. And I created an online course called Hire Lab to cover this as well for people who want to just master the process and do it on their own. But it's a multi-step interview process. It's five steps. We tried to make it as efficient and time um, respectful of everybody's time as possible while also making sure that we check all those boxes. And so in our internal speak at Pro REA staffing, we're always asking, are they JCG plus T? Are we sure before an offer is written that they've covered all those points? And, uh, you know, we now, now that I've embraced systems, now that I have Liza and other people on my team to help me do that, we've really created some rock solid systems to make sure that our clients slow down, follow the steps and, you know, feel fully in alignment before they make that offer. You know, what's so fascinating about this. There's so many different directions I can take what you just said. Gang, here's what I want you to hear though. You're not the expert right now in hiring. You're not. And, and if you failed, okay, great. Do you have more time and resources and money to fail again? No, you don't. You have to hire. This is a leverage-based conversation right here. These people that are listening need to leverage themselves through you to go find the right talent. Because here's what I have found in my experience too. <laughs> Agents will go out and even recruiters will go out and they will say, I need leverage. Well, then they will go out and they'll find, they will find their next door neighbor's best friend's daughter or son that needs a part-time job during the summer and they'll hire them and they'll think, holy cow, what an incredible opportunity I have. Now I have someone on my team and they're going to do all my stuff for me. Mm -mm, it doesn't work that way, does it? No, it doesn't. And <laughs> I think one of, one of the, the blessings and curses to your typical real estate agent or salesperson or recruiter is that they're a high eye on the desk. They like people. They like to engage with people and they tend to gravitate to people who are like them. So if they're on the front line of their hiring process, guess what? They're not slowing down to check all the boxes. They see somebody who's shiny and bright that they like, and they're going to have fun with, and they hire that person. And then they find out that they don't have the skills or they don't have the culture fit or they don't have the goal alignment that they need in order to be successful with them. Oh, I mean, you're, you're so small. If Dana was standing right here, who is my better half, who also has a podcast, uh, she talks about this all the time. She said when she first started hiring, um, she would say, oh my gosh, are those Kinder Scott earrings? I love those. You're definitely going to be on my team. This is going to be so fun. Oh my gosh, you're going to have Tory Burke shoes on. This is so fun. No, gang, that's not what you do. That's not how you hire someone. So I want everyone to write that down to three categories of maybe why it doesn't work is job, culture, and goal, right? That's what we just yeah. learned from Vanessa. And then clearly talent on the end. And then now let's walk into real quick, your methodology says so you say you have five steps. So we got higher labs. What, what tell us all about that. Right. So our, our first step is just an informational phone interview, right? And we, uh, you know, we have a series of questions that we ask that, you know, after thousands and thousands of interviews, we know that these are the kinds of questions. This is the, you know, the top 10 questions you should ask first mm -hmm. and to decide if somebody has the basic skills that you need. 
Um, the next step is the informational interview. This is where you're going to go through their resume starting at the bottom. And there's a series of questions that you want to ask about each of their jobs. And of course, I don't think I'm gonna get this right off the top of my head, but it's from a great book called Who. But basically you want to understand why did you take this job? What were you hired to do? What were, what were your wins? What were you successful at? Mm -hmm. What were your challenges? And why did you leave? What's interesting is when you listen to somebody answer these questions for each of their positions, you will find patterns. Mm -hmm. Often you will hear somebody say that they are hired to do one thing, but that isn't the thing that they're most proud of that they accomplished. And then you'll hear, so for example, I've interviewed several transaction coordinators. They were hired to be a TC. What did they accomplish? They started a marketing program or they beefed up the social media account. The next job, hired as a TC, one at marketing. And so you see people, like they are not even conscious of these like patterns in their behavior. Also, you know, why did you leave? Talent is pulled forward. Mm. Uh, Non-talent is pushed out. So of course, everybody's going to have one or two bad jobs in their career. Not everything's going to work out. But if somebody uses a lot of victim speech, when they talk about why they moved from job to job, that is a huge red flag. The, you know, your best scenario is somebody who says, oh, well, my, my boss was hired at another company and they brought me with them. Then a recruiter called me and offered me this great opportunity to do this thing I wanted to do next. And then there's like this natural flow in their career project trajectory. Uh, right. You'll see that a lot with talented people. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you want to listen for those patterns. Um, so from there, then we do the DISC behavioral assessment. Okay. And I'm sure many of your listeners are familiar with the DISC. I know that for some people, they like to do this right up front and they'll use it as a disqualifier. And I completely disagree with that. Look, the DISC is a way for you to start a conversation about how somebody is likely to behave in your office and to start to talk about things like values, the way people make decisions, the way they communicate. And it's part of your data set that, that you'll use to make a decision, but it is not the end all be all. Hmm. And I'll use myself as an example. I'm a DC on the disc. So if you were interviewing me, you might say, "Woo, that's amazing. Okay, you're a driver, you're detail oriented, done. But here's the problem. I am not that detail oriented. Yes, I'm a high C, I drill into the details, but man, I am like the queen of typos. You would not be happy having me as your assistant. I need an assistant, we work very well together. She makes me look good. So if you just take a disc on face value, you could really miss the things that are most important to you. And I've learned this from watching my recruiters. If they think they know what somebody's disc is, it changes how they interview them. If you go into your first interview with a, with a candidate and you think that they're a high SC, they're, they're stable, consistent, detail-oriented, I guarantee you, you will not drill down on those topics as much because you'll have an assumption about who they are. But if you've already spent a little time with a candidate and then you go through their disc, now you can measure what you've, you think you know about the person against what you're reading and you can have a much more... Um, balanced conversation. And I think the disc conversation is one of the most powerful conversations you can have during the interview process because it brings up so much great stuff. All right. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to interrupt you here of your yeah. five steps, but that gang was just gold right there. How many of us have started the conversations with the disc? How many of us have given the disc and then judged their, 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 their answers uh, before they even walk in the door? That was incredible. Thanks for sharing that. Really sure. Really. And yeah. And one other thing, look, not all discs are, comp are um, equal, mm -hmm. right? So we use a disc called people keys okay. and uh, we, you can order it from our site. I think it's like 25 bucks, but we've used Ableson. We've used the free Tony Robbins version, and we've used this for thousands of candidates. Um, some of them skew high on a certain letter. And we've found that the people keys disc is the most consistently accurate. So keep that in mind, especially if you're using a free version. They're, they're really, I mean, the worst thing you could do is to use, say, the free Tony Robbins disc and use it as a disqualifier qualifier on a candidate. Mm -hmm. It tends to skew very high on I. Does it? Okay. So anyway, Good that's my little soapbox on the disc. Yeah. Okay. So, so you've spent about an hour going through this person's disc assessment. 
And by the way, you could combine the informational interview and the disc as like a one interview block. So that could take you about two hours. So you don't want, you know, like you need to see this person on multiple occasions, but you also don't want to drag this out for two months, right? Now, when you get down to your top one or two candidates, then it's time to go into what we call a day in the life interview. Mm. And this is a combination of on-site, if possible, skill assessment and culture fit assessment. And this is a longer interview. It's about a half a day. And the goal here is one, to test what you expect and to give them a, a sense of what it's going to be like, give them a sense of a day in the life. If there are other people in your office, maybe have everybody go out to lunch together. This should be a little bit more relaxed. This is your chance to really get to know this person and as best as possible, um, get a feel for what it's going to be like to have them in your office. And there are some different ways to, to set this up. And we, you know, consult with clients on how to, how to structure it or what skill tests to give. And in the higher lab course, we give lots of feedback on this. Okay. Now you're almost done. And most people at this point are like, done, signed, let's do it. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. But you're oh, not yes, yeah. ready yet. No. Yeah. Yeah. This is enough. Right. You need to check references. Mm. Even if you think they're awesome, you still need to check the references. Even if the references only tell you good things, if you ask the right questions to your references, you can learn what motivates this person, how best to train this person, um, you know, how, how to meet their needs mm -hmm. as well. And of course, it'll help you uncover red flags. The way we handle references is we want to pick the people we speak to. So as you're going through your interview process, you're you're saying, oh, that the boss, what, what was his name? And you're writing it down. Oh, tell what was the name of that coworker you just shared with me in that story right there? So when you get to this point, you say, I would like to speak to these people. Will you please, you know, give me permission? And you do need to get your their permission mm -hmm. to call them. So you do that. And then we have our final alignment conversation. And this is so powerful. This is not an interview. This is more of a, a partnership conversation. This is your chance to go over your goals for them. Their, you know, 30, 60, 90 day performance goals, long-term goals, you know, share how they fit into your vision for your company. This is so important. If you're hiring talent, they want a job where they're going to make an impact. Right. And it's your job to make sure they understand how they'll make an impact with you. You're also going to talk about their personal, professional, and financial goals. Mm. So you understand what's important to them. And then this is when you can start talking about compensation. You can have a, a really straightforward conversation, conver conversation about compensation. And if let's say they say, you know, I'm really trying to save for a house. Great. Okay. So this is what I can afford to pay you in base salary. Would it be helpful if we tied, put your bonuses into an interest bearing account and then you got them at a certain point, or how can I support you in achieving your goals? Let me tell you, hands down, almost every admin I know will pick a job that might pay a little bit less mm -hmm. if they know they're working for a boss who is as invested in them as they are in that company. So, so. this is a really powerful conversation. Um, and then you can talk about how you're going to train and onboard them. The, the more you can do to think about how you're going to get this person from day zero to day 90 successfully, the better. And um, I know you've had Kathleen Metcalf on your podcast. Yep. She is a gem of all gems. Really? So we, we, we send all of our, um, our clients to her for coaching. And this is what we found. When clients invest in properly training and onboarding their assistant, we have about a 3% chance that a placement won't work out. But 3%. Wow, 3%. Wow. 3%. That's yeah. That's it. However, if if a client doesn't go through coaching and they just take even an experienced assistant and they're like, I got it, I'm good, we're we're off. We have about a 20% chance that that placement isn't going to work out. Which is wow. ridiculous. Which is so that's why we send everybody to Kathleen. Because a lot happens. It doesn't matter how, how um, experienced that admin is. And sometimes it's even worse if they're really experienced because they're used to being right. They're used to knowing how things work. And now they're in this new environment. And if you dump and run or you freak out because they make a mistake and they start to get afraid to make mistake, mistakes and we you know, start this downward, downward spiral, 
well, your very qualified, wonderful assistant who was so excited to come and work for you is, um, you know, it's going to fall apart. Right, exactly. So, so we go through all of this work to get you to, okay, this person is a JCG plus T. They're invested in me. I'm invested in them. Great. They start. You're not done. Mm-hmm. You know, there's this, this other piece that is equally important to your success. Right. So don't stop oh. short of the finish line. Okay. So I, I want to, I want to share something with you and all yeah. the audience, because if they haven't done this, I want them to pause this podcast, rewind it, start from the beginning and listen all over again. I just took seven pages of little itty bitty notepads and notes. And this is incredible. Uh, my, my biggest takeaway here that I just heard outside of the disc um, was, oh, I can't read it. My writing's too small. I'll, I'll go back to the last one is gang, go get your EAs coached up, right? So you're going to take this time and you're going to take this, this, if you leverage through pro REA staffing, or if you go through the, the, uh, the higher labs course, either way, you're going to now have a candidate and that candidate and maybe even a higher E that needs to go get coached up on something. Kathleen told me something that I thought was really, really cool. In addition to all the coaching that she does, one of the areas that she coaches on is coaches the EA to understand how to interact with their boss, which we don't even think about, right? It's so, so cool. Okay, in closing, because this has been phenomenal, how can they find you? How can they leverage through your company? What can they do to go have you go find them their next EA so they can triple their business? Yeah, thank you. So we have a website dedicated to helping agents hire, train, and develop their team. So it's hire-lab.com, hire-lab.com. And we have three different ways to help people hire. We have our retained search process. This is our kit glove, full service. We're going to deliver pre-screen candidates and guarantee your hire program. We have something called candidate screening services, which are a la carte recruiting services. So you can pick and choose from our different services and um, you know, be in, more involved in the process if you choose. And then we have the higher lab course, which will give you all of the forms, checklists, scripts, literally every tool you need to figure out what you need to go through the five-step hiring process. And then you'll get support through the first 90 days. Um, and then you also get discounts if you hire, if you buy the higher lab course, you get some discounts on candidate screening services. So let's say you want to do part of it on your own and then have us do your phone interviews. Mm-hmm. We can do that. So we, we can work with you no matter what your budget is to help you, you know, find and screen your, your, your candidate. Love so it. yeah, just reach out to me. We can have a conversation and, and figure out what makes the most sense for you. Be ready for your phone phones to blow up because if, if it's not from this podcast, I have at least 30 coaching clients that should be calling you tomorrow. So be ready for that. Bring it on. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, gang, this has been an incredible podcast, at least from my end, being the interviewer. And Vanessa, I really appreciate your time. What you've built there is incredible. And I know it will add many, many, many layers of value to the agent's business, to the the EAs that get hired, to the recruiter's business. So thank you for your time. Thank you for all your gold nuggets. And uh, I hope to have on you have, have you on the podcast again. Thank you. Thanks. I love it. Take care. Okay, everybody, so that was Vanessa Rosenblum at Pro REA Staffing. Go find her company at hire-labs, hire-lab.com. Go check her out, and she will help you find your next level of success. My name is Adam Roach, and I am your podcast host, host for the I Love Recruiting Podcast. Take care. See you. Bye. Yeah.